Our lesson this week is entitled Blessings, Glory, Honor, Forever. And it comes out of the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verses 6 through 14. The Sunday School Lesson, uh, April 29th, 2018. My name is Tony Miller. And uh, our subject of this, of this whole series of lessons that we've had is called All Glory and, and Honor. And, uh, and our key verse uh, in this lesson is that, that every created thing was saying blessings and honor and glory and dominion to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb of God. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to analyze the symbols of the heavenly worship of the Lamb and reflect on the significance of the world, of the whole world worshiping the Lamb who was slain and celebrate with joy the faithfulness of God. Amen. And this is uh, my YouTube channel, some 55, I guess, lessons here on Sunday School Lessons. If you would hit the subscribe button and the bell and you'll get them automatically and you can also go back and archive all of the lessons that we've done so far i apologize for the tardiness of this lesson but again we are traveling this week and uh, now i'm hoping that you would get some value out of uh what we've uh sharing this week amen so how did we get here how did we get here in this lesson today again we're in the book of revelations and i hope maybe we can get some understanding as i lead you through until we get to our lesson with all the purport preparation uh, uh that we uh, typically share, amen. So for me and for this lesson, it begins, it all begins in the garden as Satan deceived a uh, man, Adam and Eve, and they fell from grace, that they, they ate of the forbidden uh, fruit that were not uh, allowed to do, and no longer they walk with God face to face because of, they broke the relationship with, all my, all, with Almighty God. The man sinned and they, and they disobeyed God and they became separated from God and then blood be, became a requirement for sin, the sin that they had. And ultimately, we know that they left the garden that they had on clothes, obviously I offered from a, uh, an offering of a sacrifice to Almighty God. And ultimately, this Satan who deceived them will be judged in the end. And ultimately, man will need a, a redeemer. One who is going to bring the relationship back with God that would, would bring us back to that relationship and, 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 and put us back in the relationship that Adam had with Almighty God as he walked in the garden in the coolness of day with Almighty God as he, as he shared with Almighty God as God allowed him to name all the animals and he had this beautiful relationship with God. Ultimately, we get that back in the end. We need to have a redeemer that will help us to restore that relationship with Almighty God as we fellowship with Him like Adam did in the beginning of time. Amen. And Almighty God will ultimately send us a Redeemer. And uh, this Messiah will be born of a woman. And in Genesis 3.15, there is this uh, promise. The promise of one of the pivotal scriptures in all of the Bible where, where God makes his promise and he said, I'll put enmity, this open hostility between you, Satan, and the woman and between your seed and offspring and her seed who will ultimately be Jesus. And he and and he shall uh, fatally bruise you, Satan, and you will be ultimately cast into a lake of fire. And, he shall, and when you try to take him down, you will only bruise him. You only bruise his heel. Amen. But this one, Satan, throughout time, he, he, after, uh, he, he deceived Adam again, remember that, that Lucifer was cast down because of sin with one third of the angels and they have this dominion upon the earth and, 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 and Adam and, and Eve gave up their authority to, to have dominion over all the earth when they sin. And now this one Satan is, is running havoc all over the earth and, 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 and all he, he convinces all of Adam and seed to continue to oppose God throughout time. And, and, and he, he, his goal is to stop this redeemer to being born. One who is going to, who's going to bruise his head and, and man's sins and thoughts are continually evil. And, and, and such that God estimated that there's probably 7 billion people and, uh, and animals. They all went to a watery grave and they all went uh, and died and, and God reset mankind with one righteous man and sent his offspring and that would be Noah. And sin continued even after after this reset, the Tower of Battle we know of Sodom and Gomorrah and all and, and ultimately God chose this one man, Abraham, and, and ultimately through him that this Redeemer, this Messiah was going to come through. Amen. 
and 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 this one Noah that uh, that after this flood that uh, that after he he uh, the 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 the, the uh, ark rested on Mount Ararat and ultimately after the forty days and nights and 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 he built an altar to Almighty God and and there he offered sacrifices to Almighty God in verse twenty one that the Lord smelled the pleas and aroma of this of these prayers and of this sacrifice and and he said that it was a satisfying scent to him and that is what our prayers are and that is what our offerings are and that's what the burnt offerings as well are amen as we continue on and i and i shared with you with solomon a, a few weeks ago and we're in second chronicles 6 that that solomon had built an altar to almighty god and there that he offered these sacrifices to almighty god and, and there he on the he on his knees and he and he offered up the the burnt offerings unto almighty god again those sacrifices those prayers unto almighty god amen and and there that there is no uh, there's no God like you that Solomon says as Solomon dedicates this temple to Almighty God for, we're, we're there that we will all send our, our prayers up to Almighty God God's chosen people will send the prayers up to, to Almighty God and, and 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 this these prayers are that 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 the sacrifice the sweet savor to Almighty God and there he asks in verse 21 to listen to requests of your servant and to your people Israel and when they pray and they send these this 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 soothing aroma up into you as our prayers that you would uh, hear them from our from your dwelling place heaven and you'll forgive our sins amen so in our text as i do i try to do if i find words and terms and that are germane to the lesson that help us have clarity when we get there one of them uh, and there's some of these that i have in this lesson as always uh, the first one i'm using uh, i'm sharing with you is scroll a scroll is a, a long piece of paper or animal skin. People fixed it around two pieces of wood. It was usually had writing on it. The scroll roll of paper was made of material that uh, people could write on. Uh, it was a very long piece of skin uh, with words on it. Again, uh, B, the ancient shape of a book. And ultimately, the, the, the scrolls are, are book in synonymous terms. The book, uh, the maker of the scroll needed a very long piece of animal skin. Uh, when the scribe usually write on uh, one side only the first christian needed to produce uh books more cheaply so they sewed together short pieces of skin and then they wrote on both sides so that they were among the first people used this as this this whole concept of books amen another term in our lesson today is this uh lion of judah in the book of genesis Jacob blesses his children and he promised judah that his brothers will praise him and that they will bow down to him uh jacob tells judah that you are a lion's cub and judah you return from the prey my son like a lion he crouches down and lies down and like a lioness who dares to rouse him and then jacob says that in the future then in the future, the scepter, the ruler's staff will not depart from Judah. And that's the prophecy that we have here. And uh, until he whom belongs shall come and the disobedient of the nation shall be his. Uh, and this Messiah prophecy points towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the descendant, the descendant of Judah, who will rule the earth of God in Revelation 19. 11 through 16 as we get there as we move to this book of revelation that and and based on jacob's blessing this lion is a sign of the tribe of judah which is known as a kingly tribe king david was the tribe was of the tribe of judah and the lion symbolizes the power and fierceness and, and majesty and lions are the king of the beast the lion of the tribe of judah judah is a king of everything and in the Old Testament, God is sometimes described as this lion as well. So Jesus is this one lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Again, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's also the lamb of God. Amen. Uh, another term is uh, is uh, the seraphim and seraphims are uh, these angels who are closest to God and they praise God and they represent his love and, and they... Uh, there are only four of them and their primary, primary mission is to protect the throne of God and they sing these praises to God and our text it talks about a strong angel it does not dis, dis, distinguish whether it's a seraphim or a cherub 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 uh, cherub 
but it's a strong angel and I share with you as we navigate this lesson. Amen. Another term that we find in our lesson today is a seal. A seal is a biblical times uh, as, in, as in today is used to guarantee security or indicate ownership. Ancient seals were often made of wax embedded with a personalized imprint of the guarantor. The Roman authorities used such a seal to secure Jesus in that tomb. We find in Matthew 27, 16, the signet ring was also called a seal. The significance of the act of sealing is dependent upon the importance of, of the one uh, doing the seal. It, that um, that when they add that seal it's, it has some importance and one should not open it even if you have a shipping container today it has a seal that's like the same thing that 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 guarantees that one who sent it uh, is, is sending it intact as it was sent from this uh, one who who's a sender the scroll had seven seals and in, in, in our text today that each time a seal was opened certain events are revealed we find that throughout the book of Revelation as we continue on in this uh, this the this word that uh, that uh, that John has and thus the contents of the scroll is revealed pictorially by the events of John as he sees each time the seal is open and each time a seal is open a new part of the scroll is revealed and we that is the way that this whole book of Revelation is, is unveiled to us amen Another term is this uh, kinsman redeemer or redeemer. As I said before, I said in Genesis uh, that when, when Adam and Eve, they, they lost the relationship with Almighty God, that ultimately there had to be a, a redeemer. And, and, and in, in our case, uh, one who is a kinsman redeemer. And the kinsman redeemer is a male relative who according to various laws of the Pentateuch had to, the privilege or, or responsibility to act on behalf of a relative, uh, a relative who was in trouble, danger, or in need. And Hebrew term uh, uh, goel um, uh, for kinsman redeemer designate one who delivers or rescues or redeems property or a person. The kinsman is one who who redeems or vindicates the relative as illustrated more clearly in the book of Ruth where the kinsman redeemer uh, is this one Boaz and uh, I know if you may have studied the story the story of uh, Ruth and Boaz begins when Ruth and her mother-in-law Naomi returned to Bethlehem from Moab where they had been living and Naomi's husband and and both her sons and and her husband Ruth uh, uh, with her sons one uh, husband of Ruth had died and leaving the woman penniless, penniless without a male protector. And of arriving in uh, Bethlehem, Naomi sends Ruth to clean in the field of Boaz, a wealthy relative of Naomi, whom um, they, uh, through a series of divinely appointed circumstances, appeal uh, as they go, uh, Goel, again, that's that uh, redeem, and Boaz. Uh, acquiesces and he uh, willingly uh, takes Ruth as his wife and together they bear a son named Obed who became the grandfather of David the forerunner of Jesus and this whole concept of of, of kinsman redeemer that that uh, that Jesus becomes our kinsman redeemer because uh, the very word of God it's in the bosom of the father at the beginning of time that that this word became flesh and dwell among us and we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the father that he becomes uh, our kin and he become our kinsman redeemer at the end of days amen ruler of the world so the ruler of the world that we find this phrase that uh uh, the phrase God of this world or God of this age indicates that Satan is a major influence or on I ideals and opinions and goals and hopes and views of the majority of people in this world today and influences and also incumbents the world's philosophies and education and commerce and uh, the thoughts and ideas and speculations of false religions of the world are under his control and have sprung up uh, from his lies and deception. Satan also we call the prince of the power of the air. We find in Ephesians 2 and 2, he is a ruler of the world and found in John 12 and 31. And his titles are many uh, more uh, signify Satan's capabilities. To say, for example, that Satan is a prince of the power of the air is to signify that he may have, uh, he may, as he rules over the world and of the people in it. Uh, it is not to say that he rules the world completely, but God is sovereign. But he does mean that God uh, but it does mean that God, in his infinite wisdom, has allowed Satan to operate in this world within the boundaries God has set for him. And, and that there's this, uh, now that Adam gave up the authority, Satan now rules on the earth. And we see that throughout 
all of the uh, calamities that this world faces. Amen. And this is a uh, part of last week's lesson. I know it's quite wordy, some of the stuff that we have here, but as the next ones will go my, quite fast. In the seven spirits of God, there are at least three possible interpretations of the seven spirits of God. The first is that the seven spirits of God are symbolic for the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation, we find in uh, Revelation uh, uses this number seven to reflect the perfection and completion. And that seven is quite dominant in this lesson that you see a number of this word this number seven and that is the meaning of the seven and the seven spirits uh, when it's not referring to seven different spirits of God but rather to the perfect again that seven is a number of perfection and complete Holy Spirit the second view is that it could possibly be these uh, angelic beings or whatever and the third is that it could possibly be the seven spiritual uh, qualities that uh, that we find in Isaiah uh, the Bible doesn't tell us which one of these uh, that is the seven spirits of God, but the but it's it's uh, the but the first interpretation that is the Holy Spirit is more likely than not to be this whole interpretation of the seven spirits of God. Amen. So we uh, again we've come into this whole book of Revelation and we we are now in chapter five and it it opens with uh, this one apostle John who is now in his nineties and and uh, and they they tried to kill him and they could not kill him they tried to boil him in oil and 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 because they could not kill this man who was one of the last uh, of the apostles many of the other ones died a martyr's death but he did not uh, because God allowed him to stay alive and 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 here they exile him on the Isle of Patmos and and there. It was on the Lord's day that he had a vision that God gave him a revelation of the events that were uh, going to occur for the his time and and also for our for our time in the future and here this one John has this revelation uh, that he shares with us uh, that God gave him amen and, and this in this chapter uh, one that it, that it, that is this one John as he as he's uh, has this uh, this unveiling of these events that are occur that he sees this this one uh, who has this this white hair and he has this 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 uh, white robe and a golden sash and his feet is bronze and he walks among the the seven golden stanos, candlesticks and he has the seven stars in his hands and and he says he's the Alpha Omega that is this Jesus that this this our Redeemer Amen. And then chapter two and chapter two goes on and chapter three and it goes on to talk about these the, that he's writing to these seven churches and the, the seven churches he talks about their their uh, their lack of power and and, uh, and about how some churches are dead and some churches are lukewarm and but again he tells them to keep the faith that that uh, that 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 they they still have hope because uh, if they stay close to the God and stay close to Jesus amen and uh, and then and, and chapter 4 opens uh, with this whole concept of thrones that that John now he's he's uh, in his vision that he that he sees a door and he opens the door and there he goes into the scene the throne room of Almighty God and that's how uh, we went with chapter 4 we're going to I'm going to share you chapter 4 and the cells we had last week in chapter 4 and then we'll enter in chapter 5 and then enter our lesson amen chapter 4 verse 1 that that talks about this throne room that John uh, opens up into when he opens into the door and he says he seated on the go on the throne room is Almighty God who is seated on her throne and at once I was in the spirit and there before me I was on the I was in the throne uh, room of heaven and and with someone and and there, and there was sitting on the throne and that was Almighty God amen uh, this is John's revelation God glory was in this throne room and then and and verse three and and he and the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper or ruby a rainbow and 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 it shone like a emerald encircled this throne and uh these are the images that john saw as he as he peered into the throne room of almighty god amen four uh and uh, verse five and the holy spirit was present there and uh, and from the throne came flashes of lightnings and rumblings and pearls of thunder and in front of the throne uh seven lampstands again that's seven number of, of perfection uh and these were the seven spirits of god which is the holy spirit of almighty god amen the seven spirits amen 
and uh, and the four beasts uh, were there in heaven and uh, verse 6 and 7 then in front of the throne there was what looked like a, uh, a sea of glass and clear and crystal in the, in the center and around the throne and four living creatures and and there they covered their eyes and in, in front with their back and uh, that was these the, the wings that they had and the first living creature was like a lion and the second was like an ox and the third was a face like a man and the, and the fourth was like an eagle and these are the the four beasts that john saw as he peered into this throne room of almighty god amen revelations four and 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 now those those seraphim those uh those mighty angels were were there and, and each of the four living creatures had uh, had had six wings which covered their eyes and around and under the wings and and day and night they never stopped saying holy 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 is the lord god almighty who is and and it was and is and is to come and and uh, and i share with you that the in, in isaiah the the same uh share film they, they they basically did the same thing where they 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 they, they or in the throne room of Almighty God, as Isaiah saw them, and they and they too praise God, Amen. So the images again continue as John tells what he sees. That that this John, he's given us a, a, a glimpse into what is uh, present in this throne room of all God, Almighty God, as he gives us a glimpse, as we as as, as followers listen as john revealed to us what he sees and and uh and there's 24 elders were there again that is this glory and honor that 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 is this imagery and that is this persona that john finds that in verse 9 and and when whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne that is almighty god and uh, who lives forever and ever and, and the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne almighty god and worships him uh, who lives forever and ever and they lay down their crowns uh before the throne and say they they they're elders and they and they are, they have some authority on earth but before almighty god that they have to lay down their crowns because all glory and honor but not belong to them but to almighty god amen And, and and we go to revelations 9 and 10 god alone deserves this glory and honor by all of his creation creation and uh, in verse 11 that you are worthy O lord uh our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will were we were, were they were created and and have their being and, and without you lord we are nothing and because of what you did we you deserve all the glory and honor and praise only to you amen and that closes how chapter 4 begins uh, as this one john gives us this revelation this view as we watch uh, through our uh, through his words uh, what he sees in this throne room of almighty god and we continue on now in in chapter 5 as this revelation of john uh, gives us this uh, opportunity to see what he sees who is worthy to break the seal amen so in revelation 5 our verses start in chapter 6 i mean, verse 6 so i have to give you what is in chapter 1 through 5 and then we'll enter into our lesson and then we'll we'll close our lesson revelations 5 and we're in the niv as uh we were last week and john's vision continues and and in verse 1 of, of chapter 5 and then, and i saw at the right hand of him who sat on the throne which is almighty god uh, uh in the right hand i'm sorry of him who sat on the throne uh, that almighty god now has this this throw this scroll or uh as i said before uh that the scroll is uh the book uh the books that are that the that the um, that contained the words uh, with the writings on both sides sealed with seven seals that that, that this book our scroll has these writings that are important that uh, that John sees uh, uh, and he wants to know more amen Revelation 5 verses verse 2 and I, and I saw a mighty angel proclaiming who with the inner loud voice and, and I share with you that it could have been a a, 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 a seraphim or a cherub, a cherub, 
A cherubim have the, their mighty angel as well with a flaming sword. Well, the Bible does not say, so I share with you either. Or that could be or the archangel as well. Look, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll is a question. And John wonders as he sees this unveil before him. Amen. And this is John's vision continuing, but uh, in verse 3, but no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. And John is again. This is his vision, and he's looking, and he and he wants to know more. But 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 again, he, there he finds that there's no one able to do that, and and there's a search going out trying to find one who is able to unveil this vision, unveil this scroll, unroll this scroll that would take and and reveal to this John and reveal to us what events that will take place uh, as this world continues to unveil. In verse 4, as I wept, and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or book to look inside. Amen. Revelations 5 and 5, and, uh, and, and, and then one of the elders said to me, again, John, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. And he is able to open this scroll and, and and to and its seven seals that the one of the elders said, Weep no more. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered. So he can open the scrolls and his seven seals. Amen. That this one lion of the tribe of Judah, this one uh, heir of David, David, the one who is the redeemer of of all mankind, the one who overcame death, the death did not hold him, that he conquered uh, the grave. Amen. He can open this scroll and unlatch the seven seals. Amen. And that brings us now to our Sunday school lessons, blessings, and glory and honor. Revelations 5. And we're going to verses 6 through 14 again in NIV and all glory. And honor is this whole uh, theme of our uh, this whole series of lessons and we share verse 6 and then I saw a lamb looking as he had been slain standing in the center of the throne encircled by the 24 living creatures and the elders and and the lamb had seven horns again a seven number of perfection and and uh, the seven he had perfect horns of perfect power and, and he had seven eyes and he had s seven perfect vision which are the s which are the seven spirits of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God was sent was sent with, into the all of the earth that this uh, this lamb is the one who can can open this this uh, this scroll and behold the Lamb of God so John said that John uh, uh, John the Baptist said behold the Lamb of God that that taketh away the sins of the world, that this is this Jesus, that he's the one who was slain. And and, and he, he's the one uh, who stands in the in, in the midst of this uh, throne room of Almighty God, that he has ability to do this. Sunday School Lessons, Blessings and Glory and Honor again. This is uh, uh, verses uh, 7 and 8. And, and, and he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne, Almighty God. And that's Jesus. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. And, and, and each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls of incense, which were the prayers of God's people. And I shared with you before that that is that incense that the the sacrifice or the the offerings of prayers to almighty god that it is a a sweet smelling incense to almighty god that that these golden bowls of incense are are our prayers that that uh that this one uh redeemer he has the ability to open the the the, the scroll and 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 these elders bow down to him amen uh, the Sunday School lesson, blessings and glory and honor 
verse 9 and, and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take this scroll this book and open the seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and and language and people and nations that 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 Adam uh, and 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 Eve uh, because of their sin they gave up the rights to all to, to the earth that that uh, that uh, that Satan now runs rock shop all over earth and 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 he, and he has the, the control of of earth but but this one Jesus has the, the deed and trust to Almighty God I mean to the to the earth from Almighty God that that he can take the scroll and he can open the seals and uh and they sang a new song worthy are you to take the book and break the seals for you were slain and purchased from god for uh and purchased for god your blood men of every tribe and every and that's the significant part of this that it, that he didn't just do it for uh for this class of people or that class of people we all get to heaven uh if you're racist you're going to be uh, you're going to be blown away because you're going to find that every tribe and every tongue and they, every nation of every people will be present and in, uh, in heaven and, and as, as we all worship the same God. Amen. God, this one who received from the Almighty God, this this scroll that He is able to open it, and that He can open the seals, and He can peer inside of, and He can show us all the events that are going to take place in uh, in the end of days, so that we have an opportunity to understand what God has for us and and how God is go, God's plan is going to unveil to us. Amen. So Sunday school lesson, blessings, and glory and honor verse 10 and, uh, and you have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on earth that the the elders are saying to, saying that this that this one Jesus this one Redeemer this one Lamb of God this one the Lion of the tribe of Judah and we remember in in, in 1 Peter 2 and 9 that he says that we we as believers, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar, peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of the darkness into the marvelous light that he has made us to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that, that we are the priests that, that share to the world. We take the gospel to the world and we are the priest to serve Almighty God, to share the gospel to the world, that all would ultimately have to come and bow down to Jesus, that that is our goal, and that's who he's made us, and, and these, these elders share this. Amen. And again, verses 11 and 12, and, uh, and they looked and they heard the voices of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand and they encircled the throne of the living creature and the elders uh, the, the throne and the living creatures and the elders and, and a loud voice there said worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and and, and praise and and underline those because uh, i was sharing you this this theme of uh, uh last week's uh, theme was thrown and there was mentioned 13 times and this this uh lesson this this one dominant theme is a seven and we share that the power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise are a number of seven he had seven horns and and seven eyes and the, and the seven spirits and the, the seven bowls and the seven seven um is a common theme in this lesson and, and I saw and heard the voice of the angels around the throne and the living beings and the elders and the numbers of them was myriads let's not get stuck on how many people are in, in our, our praise and there's myriads time myriads and thousands time thousands that they're all singing these praises to the lamb that was slain to receive power and glory and strength and praise amen and I share with your commentary for verses 11 and 12 that the chorus of the redeemed have followed by a chorus of angels for that which the highest act of love towards whatever person 
that is manifested for whatever calamities it saved them must be the highest manifestation of divine character and will that therefore must be the cause of delight to all creatures fallen or unfallen if revelation is true then there can be no breach in the sympathies of any part of God's voluntary or intelligent universe it is needless to observe that the numbers are not to be taken literally they are simply employed to express the countless throng of that is this innumerable company innumerable company of angels we find in Hebrews 12 and 22 which which praise which raise the song loud as the numbers without numbers sweet as from blessed voices with the sing with this utter joy amen that our theme again this is this honor and glory that is our whole theme that we're having here verse 13 and and i heard every creature in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and, and all of them were saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb the almighty god and to the lamb Jesus to be praise and glory and honor and power forever and ever the glory and honor and power forever and ever amen that is about this praise right it is about his praise and uh, this us exalting almighty God and sending our gratitude and s exalting him and sending our reverence and 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 uh and and and, and majesty and giving him majesty and and giving him praise uh, that's due to him and due to him and 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 the lamb of god the, the the lion of the tribe of judah our redeemer amen singing and blessings and honor and glory and power forever to our god and this singing is forever and ever amen and I share with you uh, Psalms 96, written a thousand years before Jesus. Uh, and here the psalmist writes in, uh, in Psalms 96 that it says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Singing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all the peoples. Do great, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised he is to be feared above all gods for all the gods of the people are worthless idols but the lord has made the heavens splendor and majesty are before him strength and beauty are in his sanctuary verse 7 ascribe to the lord all families of people ascribe to the lord glory and strength Verse 8, ascribe to the Lord the glory, do his name, bring an offering and come unto his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Verse 10, say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the Lord is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens be glad. And let the earth rejoice and let the seas roar and let all that fills it and let the field exalt and everything in it and then all the trees of the forest sing for joy joy verse 13 before the lord for he comes for he comes to judge the earth and he would judge the world with righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness amen beautiful words written by the psalmist about the coming messiah about our god and how we all should send praises due to him only amen a sunday school lesson blessings and glory and honor again this is revelation 5 this is his revelation that john has as again he's he's opened this this gate and, and he's and he's gone through into the throne room of almighty god and he's he's witnessing these things and he's telling us about these things as he sees and his, and, and and our lesson is about what is going on in the very throne room of almighty god and 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 we are seeing this this vision of things as john writes to us 
as we are able to peer into what things are going on and things that will happen in the future. And verse 14, and the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and they worshiped Almighty God and the Lamb of God. Amen. And this whole concept, Amen, Amen, they just Amen, right? It's an expression used at the end of our prayers and meanings. It means so it be. And at the end of a creed, it is a solemn assertion of belief that it introduces a declaration of its equivalent that truly, it truly, or verily, verily, that uh, let it be, and so be it. Amen. So, uh, the Revelation 5 summary, all glory and honor. The, as Revelation uh, chapter 5 begins, John wrote about the seven seal scroll and this parchment, which was the essence of a legal document outlining the outlining deed information about on parcels of land which were the conditions related to opening of the scroll at first it only be done by a man who was the descendant of David this man must be deemed perfect and without sin in all of heaven and the earth search and no such being could be found and and John John was saddened by this news but an elder reminded him that Jesus who came from David's lineage the lion from the tribe of Judah is perfect and could be the one to open the scrolls a gathering is, he is held where Jesus is portrayed as his lamb and reference to his first coming when he was slain for mankind's salvation and Jesus was at the side of the throne occupied by Almighty God and John wrote about the 24 elders who rejoiced at the notion that Jesus may be able to open that scroll and, and hell and heaven celebrates and Revelation closes as uh, Revelation ends uh, with the great celebration of the elders and the angels preceding the opening of the scroll and Jesus is held as a lamb who was slain and the only one who is worthy to open the scrolls and at this all the creatures around the throne in heaven shouted Amen 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 and that Here's our Sunday School lesson for this week. All glory and honor, blessings and glory and honor forever. Glory and honor is this theme for this period. And uh, we're in Revelation chapter 5. And my prayer for you is that uh, something you've learned today strengthens your faith as the Lord provides all of your needs. That you learn something worthy of sharing and that you enjoy learning more about praising God and uh, and about worshiping God. And the, and the events that John has that he, he showed us in the book of Revelations as we traverse through these first five chapters of the book of Revelation. I hope there's something if you learn that you enjoyed sharing that you learn more about praising God that you and encouraged to learn with us and I ask you to hit the subscribe button if you so choose and I send you out as I also send every time a benediction Heavenly Father send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts to bring glory to your name is the name of Jesus the Lamb of God the very Word of God made flesh that dwell among us the, the kinsman redeemer, the one who became flesh that he could become the one who could redeem us, to put us back in the relationship that we had with, with, with God uh, like Adam had at the garden. And now we have that opportunity that we could send our prayers boldly to the throne of grace, that we, we don't have to go through some man or to, to have our prayers. We can send them ourselves and we have a personal relationship with Almighty God that we can speak to him directly is it in his name Jesus that I pray and ask these things always amen thanks so much for your time